Hey there, it's Georgie from GSD Solutions here with another uh, tutorial. So in this video, what we're going to learn is how to activate interpretation features inside of Zoom. So Zoom has allowed us to do interpretation and you can do interpretation of different languages as well as sign, including sign language. So how do we turn that on? How do we access that so we can make our events more accessible or meetings more accessible? So when you get to the Zoom website, you want to head over to my account. Once you get into your account from the left hand menu bar, you're going to go through to settings. Once you're inside of settings, you're going to just, uh, I like to search it in the search bar, interpretation. And once you search that, then you will see the different options. So we could select language interpretation, make sure that it's turned on, sign language view turned on, and then, um, you can select from these different languages, right? And then I believe they're adding more languages or if you wanted to do a custom language, for example, it's not one of the languages offered, but you will be having that language in your event. You could definitely add that language in by just typing it in. So that's step one, right? So once you do that and it's activated, the second step that you wanna go ahead and do now is schedule that meeting. Once you're scheduling your meeting, let's just say test meeting, right? Um, schedule it for the time and date that you would like, all the cool details, recurring meetings, et cetera. And I have another tutorial that we go over how to set up your Zoom meetings, registration if needed, any templates, et cetera. And then down here, this part is critical. If you do not cl click these boxes, you will not get the option when you start the Zoom event or the Zoom meeting to then tag in um, and apply somebody as the interpreter. So we're going to enable language interpretation, and then we're going to select um, these two boxes. If you know the email of the person that will be doing interpretation, and that is the email that they use for their Zoom account, go ahead and add it in there. And I say that very specific because if it's not the email that they use for their Zoom account, you could just add them inside of the live session. Because what may happen is that they get an email to come in as an interpreter from, let's say they're, you know, john at company.com. But John joins at john at uh, movers.com. And so when he joins as john at movers.com, that's his Zoom account. He won't automatically be assigned as the interpreter. So you'll still have to do it manually anyways. So just make sure that the per the email that you're putting in for the person is the email that they use on their Zoom account. If it's not, just wait till, you know, tech check or pre-event and then tag people into the proper channels. So now that we've have that all set up, what we're going to do is save this information. We have our meeting and now I'm going to show you what it would look like when you are inside of the actual Zoom meeting. All right, so now that we are inside of our Zoom meeting, what we're gonna go ahead and do is tag in our interpreters, right? So as the host, you will have access to this bar at the bottom, and now there are some new features, right? So if you have AI Companion activated, you'll see the AI Companion features here, but if you go down more, you'll see interpretation. So you wanna go ahead and click interpretation, then you will see language interpretation, which is audio. So the way the language interpretation works is that the Participant will select the language channel. I'm going to show it at the end of this video. And then they will hear the event in the language while visually seeing it with the um, original speakers and people on the screen. For sign language, the person um, that is doing the sign language will be on video and they will be able to sign while, um, you know, in a smaller screen next to the original presenter. So that could be super helpful. So how, how do we actually add people in to do interpretation or do sign language, uh, language interpretation or sign language. Uh, so you would go and click interpretation and then this uh, box will pop up. You click add interpreter. Then you will select language or sign language. So you'll select the language and then from the people that are in the chat, you'll be able to select the interpreter's name. So here um, for this test, I'm gonna use John Company. And then from the list of languages, I would select a language that they will be um, interpreting from. So if it will be going from English, if that's a, the language that the session is in, going to, and so this is the language that the interpreter will be speaking. So let's just say Japanese. 
So that I just added that there. And so now what um, John will have access to do is unmute himself. And as the main session speaker is talking, John will be simultaneously translating and participants can listen in their dedicated language. So participants, they will then see also the interpretation globe and select that. And then they could select the language they would like to listen in, whether it's the original language, you know, English, Japanese, um, and then us as the host will be able to select, you know, addi adding um, additional languages by managing language interpretation. So I'm going to go back in here. And now let's say I want to add in my sign language interpreter, same thing, add interpreter, sign language. Um, so the person that's doing language cannot also do sign language. So you have to select a different person. So I'm selecting myself as um, the sign language interpreter. Then I can choose what type of sign language. So that's the cool part. So American, French, Japanese, Russian, Brazilian, etc. And then I would select that. And then I would update. And so now what the viewer will see, right? So the person that needs a sign language would be able to see the smaller screen. And then the sign language interpreter would be able to unmute them, uh, turn on their camera and that person. So because of this example, I'm double. So the main speaker would be here. And then the sign language interpreter would be here on this screen and the individual can move it around what part of the screen that they needed to be at. So right now there's three of me, but <laughs> in real life, it'll only be the main speaker over here and then the sign language um, interpreter in the smaller screen for the participant to view. Now let's say that you wanted to remove an interpreter because oftentimes with interpretation, they may do it for part of, the part of the session or the entire session, or maybe you're swapping interpreters. What you would go ahead and do is select interpretation, manage, and then you would put an X and just always update so let's say we're removing it all and then we could end interpretation all together. So I hope you all enjoyed this uh, quick tutorial around how to activate interpretation settings inside of your meetings. It makes it so much more accessible for various people from various backgrounds. So, you know, definitely I advise everyone if you can do interpretation, do so. If you're looking for interpretation services, um, GSD, we have a bunch of partners that do interpretation. So if you reach out to us at gsdsolutionsinc.com, we could point you in the direction of one of our partners, as well as there's a bunch listed in our virtual event guide, which is free on our website. If you, again, head on over to gsdsolutionsinc.com and just hit on free resources. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to please subscribe and like this video. Let us know in the comments if, if you have any questions or how we can support you in better using digital tools to scale your business. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everybody.